One day I was just like, no, I must go for Sadhu Sangha. <laughs> I must. Like, I've been saying this, but I must go for Darshan. So tricky, tricky, I went. And I didn't return. I walked into the ashram and they were singing And the, the melody was just like, I got so drawn in. And then the kata of Dhammadarastaka, he spoke. And Bhajan Rahasya just melted my heart. And I just like, this is, I felt, you know, this vibe, this aura, and Gurudev had this beautiful aura and energy and just so much love and affection. I just, I was like, it reminded me of Gauravina Maharaj straight away. And uh, I didn't go back. I had the same pair of clothes for three days. I remember I just joined the Parkrama straight away. And we went to Bailvan. In Gurudev's kata, every, I just, I was like, this is nectar, I don't want to go. And, uh, yeah, I basically joined. And I went and got my stuff from Ayendra Peru sneakily. I just paid my basins from a distance and ran off to Gurudev. <laughs> Never to look back, ever. Really, ever. And, uh, yeah, then I started, I went under... Uh, Param Paramananda Prabhu took me under his wing and I was doing a lot of cooking seva and other different seva and I was supposed to get initiated in 97 Gurudev he kept on saying oh I want to give you Harinam, I want to give you everything I want to give you everything and then I went to Pra Paramananda Prabhu and I was like Paramananda Prabhu Gurudev wants to give me Diksha should I take he's like no no no. I was supposed to take with Prem Projan actually. And I was supposed to get shaved and everything and, and I went to Prabhuji should I because you know, it was like his chella. Maybe I'm not qualified yet. You know, in Iskan we have that we had that mood that we're not qualified and we should first become somewhat qualified and be ready for that instruction. So I I remember crying and crying wondering why I was not qualified to receive initiation and Vajanti Mala came. She's like, why are you crying? And I was like, oh, I want to... Gurudev saying I should take Harinam and Diksha, but... Paramananda was saying no, and she's like, why is he saying like this? And I was like, well, maybe I'm not qualified, you know, and, but I was just praying for that qualification. And, uh, so from 90, yeah, then 97, I was in Maturamat serving under Prabhuji. And I had some desires actually, and the desire was to remove this offense that Iskon had with Gurudev. I wanted to remove it. And one of the major parts of the offense was that they said Gurudev had no relationship with Prabhupada. He was falsifying. He was what he said about Prabhupada's relationship was false. And Gurudev was like, I gave them so many letters that proved that relationship and then they said somehow those letters disappeared and maybe they were burnt, maybe they were stolen, maybe they were not catalogued, maybe they're hidden. I was like, this is... So when uh, Gurudev, he went for his first tour to Holland I was there with uh, Prem Ananda Peru and Prem Prajan and Dharma Dharmaraj, only three of us. So Prem Ananda Peru gave me Prabhupada's room and at that time it was just a, a smelly vegetable room with old potatoes so I cleaned up everything. I was like, this is Prabhupada's room? I'm going to worship this room. So I cleaned up everything, organized all the, any vegetables that would come out, organized so that they wouldn't go rotten. Or I was only 16. And I started chanting and my prayer was, I must find some letters. I will find those letters, something to prove that Gurudev had a deep relationship with Srila Prabhupada, very deep relationship. So Gurudev, uh, he went on his tour, he came back 
and I believe it was uh, about a year or nine months or so later, Gurudev moved from downstairs to upstairs. They built a new room, and it was off. It was uh, after Kartik ninety-seven, uh, yeah, ninety-seven, or around that time. They moved Gurudev upstairs, and uh, so we were moving all of Gurudev's library from downstairs Mathura Mutt the, on the level of the temple upstairs so big almiras Gurudev had thousands of books in three almiras he had no space even for his bed there was the bed and two big three big almiras full of books everywhere and I mean you couldn't find anything really it was uh, <laughs> it was like a treasure trove of Shastra you know it, uh, every time I saw Gurudev's uh, library I was just like drooling <laughs> I want to read all of that <laughs> Because, uh, you know, uh, I loved reading and studying Vaishnav Shastra. Anyhow, so we were moving everything, and all the Mallers moved, everything was moved, and there was just one big dust pile in the corner. And uh, I was like, that's, you know, and they were about to start putting water everywhere and cleaning, you know. I was like, no, there's something in the corner there. So dug open this big dust pile and there was a bag about this big just a little sachet and I was like what is this this is something mysterious at the back of the Almar is a little sachet so I opened the sachet and sure enough every letter I saw had Prabhupada's signature on it and I was just ecstatic. I was just like, I've been praying for this for like a whole year, almost, you know, like a year to find these. And then I showed um, at that time Naveen Krishna Brahmachari. <clears throat> and uh, he went, took it to Gurudev, and then Gurudev called me up and he had this big smile on his face. And he was just giving me profuse blessings. And yeah, it was just, it really. It really like it was something that really started my relationship with Gurudev. Remember one time one Gurudev disciple in one festival he came to him and he said, Ask O Gurudev and which form I have to meditate because we have your uh, Gurudev form, uh, what which form we are we can see and your Manjari form what Shemarani uh, Didi was drew. And Gurudev he said you have to meditate in my Manjari form. And we, were, we all were surprised in like, how Gurudev, from the beginning, he given, this is such a high thing. And Gurudev explained this even like, this is all pictures, what Shyamarani did, uh, she was uh, paint. This is actually window to spiritual world. Gurudev himself, he posed to her, like his, uh, uh, showing her mood of each uh, like personality in these pictures, like how Krishna he have to be, how Radharani he have to be, why? Because Gurudev wants to open his heart and give it his heart to all. He actually wants to give this transcendental world. And even disciples are not qualified, but still he have this desire to give. This is speciality of Mahabhagavata Guru. And uh, Actually, uh, from the time of Vishwanath Chakravati Thakur, nobody distributing this, like Prema Dharma. Nobody doing this. Only Gurudev, he, came, he came in and he doing this so much in open way. And uh, we have to uh, also appreciate how much this is valuable for us and how much we have to meditate and Gurudev, uh, like, uh, lectures, everything what Gurudev left for us. We have to really way, in really deep way to meditate at this all. Uh, what Gurudev left for us, because there's so many Leela, so many uh, treasure there. And it's very rare to get such a high Guru, like such a high Guru with this conception and how he like openly telling to all of his disciple and many Gaudiya Math actually they was thinking can we distribute these high things they can do but Srila Gurudev he was so strong 
he not care because he have so much inspiration from his guru parampara and he's telling i don't want to build so many uh, like temple all around the world why because i want all my disciple coming to vraj and he said Gurev said that the shloka I remember so many times, he said, I want you coming to Vraj. And I want you have a cessation with Vraj, uh, with Vraj and uh, like uh, Vraj Javasi. I want you performing this all kind of activity like hearing, using your time for the glories of the God. And by this way, you can have perfection. And Guru said, I want all coming for Raj Mandala Parikram. I want like, like people coming to Raj, because in Raj is so much mood here. Like all our Gaswami, they prefer like uh, this uh, all uh, bhajan here. And they left for us so much glories of this old place. So Gurudev, he's like, by his glories, we can know how much treasure he and Raj. Really, we can imagine this. Another mem memory I have is uh, in the, on the Badger, uh, one of the early Badger festivals that uh, I'd been Gurudev a couple of years and I was thinking, when, when is Gurudev going to give me his mercy and twist my ear and, uh, and give me some real mercy? And uh, I was sat behind the pavilion in Badia just before class and Srila Gurudev uh, 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 came out, he was on his way to class and he came up to me and he, he got my ear and he said, what your ears twist? <laughs> and, yeah. It gave me so much love and affection. Uh, another time in France, uh, we were. Uh, uh, it was the first or second time we went to France in the program, and uh, that we were coming out of the main hall, and there was a, a concrete slope going down. It was a, a, a little steep. Uh, and uh, I'd gone out of the door and uh, uh, held the wheels so that because uh, I, I was going to flip up onto my back wheels to roll down and uh, that uh, someone pushed from behind and even though I was holding holding the wheels that still it's the slope was at such that I slipped the wheelchair just slid down the slope and I fell out onto the floor and immediately, uh, I was thinking, uh, who, who, uh, someone to blame, and someone pushed me. But the uh, Gurudev was um, uh, appeared there at that time, and, and he uh, and immediately said, "Oh, this is my fault. I, I'm sorry. This is my fault." And from this, that I, I understood that actually, that it, that that it wasn't because uh, someone, but it was my fault that it wasn't some external cause. That I that I have no one to blame for what's happening to me, but my but myself. But, but my 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 thinking when I landed on the floor was someone had pushed me, but actually, Gurudev corrected me very very nicely by by his actions, by his words. When I went to his room because I wanted to stay in India. And then I went there in the room, I'm like, Gurudev, I really want to stay in India, is that okay if I stay? Do you give your blessing? And it's like, why are you going to stay here? I'm like, ah, I want to pass some time here and learn some things from here. And it's like, yeah, but you cannot be alone. You got to find someone to stay here. And at that time, there was a Brazilian family there. And... We stayed together, it was a very hard time, I remember a lot of things happening I, and I remember I was very happy that he said, if you find someone, you can stay and then I did find, and then I went to, what his name, Premanand Prabhu uh -huh. I was like, I'm gonna stay in India, he's like, there's a lot of monkeys already here, why are you gonna stay? <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, whoa, 
<laughs> I'm very happy. I don't care. I'm just gonna be one more monkey here. <laughs> and it was very, very good for me to stay there and keep going visit Gurudev and you know after the festival is more empty and I learned a lot of things there and there where I find Gopal and we also went to um, talk to Gurudev about getting married and then he's like ah Gopal you wanna get married okay and then he grabbed Gopal by the ear and <laughs> like you wanna get married you're gonna see what's marriage life like and then I remember Gopal I started crying, crying, crying. And then I'm like, but Gurudev, you give your blessing to us. And then <laughs> he was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> this is very good. I'm like, we we're shocked, like, whoa. It's like, I never gave my blessing to my daughters to get in that cycle of marriage living and dying and again and again and again i love you guys too much to give my blessings to this and in my heart i totally understood what he was saying and yeah father wouldn't tell the daughter to get in that cycle he knows that cycle but then he was very gentle saying like but in two years, let's talk about this. <laughs> in his heart, I knew he saw everything already. In two years, we are already married. We had already two kids and living the marriage life and totally understand, understanding everything Gurdiv was saying about marriage life. And, but I'm very happy that Gurdiv is always with us and guiding and always bringing so much teachings all the time to us and that's grateful. <laughs> One thing I forgot about the whole marriage thing, when Gurudev grabbed Gopal's ear and said, you're gonna stop preaching, you're gonna stop going around and preaching and then I was like, no, no Gurudev, when he goes to Brazil we can preach there and I'm gonna make sure we're always around also preaching and he <laughs> looked like, mm. <laughs> That didn't really happen, but we got the message. Another thing I remember is when Gurdiv came to Brazil, I was pregnant, Gopinath was on my belly, and we didn't even know Gopi's name yet. And Gopal really went Gopinath. And then we're like, oh, let's go talk to Gurdiv. And then he was there with a lot of people, we tried to get in there. When we get there, it's like, you guys here. Nice to see you again. And then we're very happy to have that. That, he really remember us, you know? And then we're like, good day, she's pregnant and we don't know the name yet. We would like you to give a name. And then he's like, Gopinath. And we were shocked because Gopal already won Gopinath. We would put two names maybe. And then he said Gopinath and Gopal said Gopinath. And then Gopinath was the name and he's there now. <laughs>